Just got finished talking with WWE champ Drew McIntyre. I'll be watching. Uh, honestly, I will be uh, SummerSlam with my boys. And I do think when they write a history of how sports and sports entertainment responded to the coronavirus, that the ability of the WWE to get the WrestleMania event on television when there was absolutely nothing out there at all, every sport was shut down. For them to have back-to-back WrestleMania events on, I think it was like April 6th and April 7th or April 5th and April 6th, something like that, will, I think, go down pretty interestingly in history because what I would say is the impresarios of the sports universe out there the Vince McMahons and the Dana Whites, the guys who refuse to allow an uh, unprecedented external medical and virology- virological crisis to stop them from being able to put on their events is honestly deserving of far more praise than they received. Because it's easy when you're a billionaire or worth hundreds of millions of dollars to just kick up your feet and say, hey, I'm not going to try to figure out a way to do this. But I think that what Vince McMahon and Dana White did was they paved the way for every other sports league to follow. They were pioneers. And I think their success in finding a way to get their sports back and to entertain America is ultimately a tremendous triumph. And they deserve a lot of credit for it. And it's set the table for where we are right now, which is with the Kansas City Chiefs announcing that not only are they going to play, they are going to have crowds present for their event. And so my poll question that's out there for you is, would you go watch your favorite football team play in person this September if fans are permitted 14,000 of you have voted in the first uh, 45 minutes or so that this poll has been up. 83% of you are saying yes. And unanimously on this show, we all said that we would go and watch our favorite teams play. And interestingly, I wonder how many of the 17% are people not afraid of the coronavirus, but are opposed to all of the political angles when it comes to uh, the sport, right? They're concerned about what players are going to do on the field to start the season more so than they're concerned about the coronavirus. I think there are people out there who are saying, to heck with the NFL. If they're going to protest, I'm not going to watch even more than they're concerned about the coronavirus. Now, I'm going to go. And I don't know if you saw, but there's been reports. We talked about this on the program, and I I said it a while back. I said, I think the NFL is going to scrap live performances of the national anthem on the field this year because of the coronavirus. And it would not surprise me if, in general, they're not going to have cheerleaders, they're not going to have soldiers, they're not going to have as many cameramen, as many photographers, They're not going to have anywhere near the pomp and circumstance and pageantry that usually surrounds the start of NFL games. So I wonder if the NFL is going to use the coronavirus as a little bit of an excuse in order to avoid this scenario. But I will say this, it didn't get a lot of attention, but the MLS has gotten a lot of criticism over their players kneeling in Dallas with the live crowd there. And given the fact that the Kansas City Chiefs have now said they're going to have a live crowd, remember, the NBA ratings are tanking. There's an article I saw in The Athletic by Ethan Strauss, did a good job. He pointed out that in the last eight years, the NBA has lost half of their viewership. And everybody out there who's all social justice woke and everything else, they try to hide the facts. And you may have even seen Mark Cuban. Did you guys see Mark Cuban come after me on Twitter when I pointed out that the NBA was doing crappy in ratings? Let me give you a ratings number that'll be kind of blow your mind on the NBA. On Friday, more people watched 90 Day Fiance on cable than any NBA basketball game. What was that again? 
90. Do anybody else watch oh, 90 Day Fiance? Oh, my wife loves that freaking show. Oh, I, oh 90 Day God. Fiance is on in my house all the time, oh, it's too. it's drama, dude. Some of those people are so stupid. The Real Housewives are on in my house, and 90 Day Fiance is on in my house. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I get sucked in every now and then. I'll be walking Same through here. the house. My wife's got it on. And I'll be like, that couple's getting married? Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Well, there's no way loves. that couple's going to get married. That's not true love. I know true love when I see it. But 90 Day Fiance is d- dunked on all of the NBA games on Friday. So I'm curious how yesterday's games will end up doing in terms of audience. But it is interesting because there's no audience. So nobody can boo or react when all the players kneel because they're playing in front of basically nobody. And so when the MLS players got booed, it was like they were they were thinking to themselves, oh my God, is this real? And I think that without fans present, players have gotten confused because they look at social media and people are like, oh, it's so heroic that you take a knee. Well, the people who buy tickets are going, I think many of them, to let the athletes have it if they refuse to stand for the national anthem. So I don't know how well we'll be able to hear it because there may only be, you know, 16, 17,000 people present in what would ordinarily be a full stadium. And obviously Kansas City Chief fans are particularly excited about celebrating their team because they just won a Super Bowl. So maybe it'll be muted in terms of the overall attention that it receives on September 10th. But the MLS fans definitely let it be known that they did not appreciate the players all kneeling for the national anthem. I think there would be a ton of booing going on in the NBA uh, if there were fans present for their playoffs. Do you buy in that, Danny G, that there are a lot of fans out there that would not be pleased if they were physically present with, uh, with the way that the NBA is, uh, is, is performing before games start? Uh, I'm not sure. I would think it would be split because there is a large segment of NBA fans who are just like NBA Twitter where they're fine with... I don't even think it's a large segment. I think that... You don't think it's split, though, in the stands? uh, I mean, I I don't know about split. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who don't care. My argument has been, I don't think you gain any fans at all by protesting the national anthem. Yeah, I buy that, but I just think if the fans are there, they'd be excited to watch the game. And just like the way I tuned in yesterday, I honestly didn't pay attention to anything else but the actual basketball. But I think that's hard to do in the NBA. Jason Whitlock had a good column about this. But I understand your argument if you're like, hey, I don't care if the players kneel. I'll just ignore it. I'll put it on five minutes after the game starts and just watch the game. But when Black Lives Matter is written on the court and when every player has social justice warrior slogans on their jersey – I think it's impossible not to notice, not to mention all of the woke commercials genuinely drive me batty. Like I, every single time if I'm watching an NBA game and it goes to commercial, I flip to another sporting event just because the commercials are so insanely preachy woke that in addition to the game itself, even in the commercial break, I'm being lectured to about politics and I think there are a huge percentage of otherwise people who would be very interested in watching the NBA that are saying peace out I'm not watching because it's impossible not to be overwhelmed by politics during the course of the games and I think it's bad for the brand and I believe that the number of viewers are going to tank uh, especially now because there's a lot of competition. See, the NBA has gotten lazy because most of the time they don't have a lot of competition for their playoffs. What's going to happen come September when all the NFL games are going on, when theoretically college football comes back, when you've got golf, when you've got the NHL playoffs still going on, when you've got Major League Baseball going on? I think the NBA is in for a rude awakening as they recognize where they really stand in the American sporting landscape, and it ain't anywhere near where they think it is.